Vishai is here. Um, he's going to quickly answer his questions. Um, I'm very grateful for him to take the time to do this for us. And kind of just see what I think. Um, so of these 10 questions, um, one that I think is kind of a nice thing to start with is, what is something that uh, you do not understand about sickle cell? And so me as a sickle cell uh, provider, um, a physician that takes care of both kids and adults, I actually do a lot of research within sickle cell disease, and that includes a lot of research trying out new medications, trying technology. Um, but all of the things that we are trying in sickle cell disease, I think come down to one big thing, which I really try to make sure I emphasize, which is that every single patient is different. Everyone, everyone has their own path. And because of that, the thing I don't understand, and I really want to make sure we try to make an effort to understand, is what is it that makes one person different from another? They, you know, two patients have sickle cell disease type SS, you would think that they both have, and some people say, oh, they have a very severe type of sickle cell because they have type SS, but that's actually not always true. I have some SS patients that do wonderfully and beautiful, and, and, and then I have other patients who really just have a lot of issues at times. And so how do I figure out which patient I'm, I'm gonna have in my office is not really known until they walk that, until they walk that path. So if there's one thing that I don't really understand about sickle cell disease, and we are trying to understand is, is what, you know, what makes every patient different. And so some of the efforts to try and do that just to kind of give you some, some idea of what's being done. There are a lot of genetic research being done. Are there some, something specific to the genes that you inherited from mom and dad that make it so that you have one type of sickle cell disease that has more or less issues? Um, is it something that, uh, how you're wired, so that your brain and your nerves, is it something that has to do with that? Um, is it something to do with everything around you, your society and, and your mental health and, and how your education and your environment? And, and to be honest, it's probably all of it. Um, but that's something I'm definitely really interested in. And one big effort that we are doing, I have to put a little bit of a plug in here, is that we are, we are as Duke University, part of one of eight sites around the country as part of a registry. Registry is basically, uh, and what registry is, is just basically having a patient put into uh, a database so we can see how you grow up with sickle cell disease. The only way I can know uh, what a patient's path is going to end up being is to put everyone to it a hat, throw them all together, and then see how you grow up. See how you grow up with sickle cell disease. And then I can look back and say, oh, this is why one patient may have more issues than another. Um, so that's question number one. Um, that what is the one thing you want to see sickle cell patients do more of? Um, you know, I, I think that if there's anything that I would, I would ask is, um, and there's actually a lot of things, um, but Tell probably, <laughs> uh, but it, it, it asks for one. So I'll start with one <laughs> most uh, most important thing is continue to fight the fight um, and advocate for yourself. Um, and, and I think that many times you feel like you're alone, and, and it is really hard uh, to understand and be in your shoes. Um, even another, like as I just said, another patient uh, who has sickle cell disease still is not wearing your shoes. Uh, but fight the fight in the sense that know that you have a community and you have a group, be it um, other patients, family, uh, relatives, other healthcare professionals, uh, such as myself, who are here to fight with you. So continue to fight the fight. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with advocacy. Um, and the second part I would just add is an extension of that, is as you, as you fight the fight, um, continue education. So. Uh, I really advocate education, education to kids, families, other medical providers, so that if someone at some point is able to fight for you. And, and so I think that those two kind of go together. Um, what is the biggest issue you encounter with sickle cell patients? Um, so I guess the biggest issue I, I, I might say is, and this is, is hard to, to maybe change, which, but but is basically to try and um, do everything you can to come see your doctor. Um, and again, it, it's it, you have two ends of the spectrum. If you're a patient that does really really well, absolutely, you you you'll probably come. But you also may think I'm doing really well. I don't need to come. 
And, and I think that that actually, in the end, may cause problems because we're not screening you and watching you like a hawk. I always say that word. I'm going to watch you like a hawk and watch you closely so that you don't have issues. And then you have our, our other set of patients, which is a small subset too, that have lots of problems. And they're either in the hospital all the time, in the ER, trying to not come to the hospital when they can. But part of that is I'm not feeling well, I feel really crappy, so I'm going to stay home. Uh, and that, that's a problem too. So I really advocate trying to come to the office in some way, or at least communicate with the office, uh, and, and find um, a way for us to get you help. And I think that that would be, that, that would be one thing I would say uh, might be nice. Um, I'm gonna answer one or two more questions. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what number I'm at now, but uh, what is the most important tip you will give other providers about sickle cell? So this is a, good, this is a great question. So the most important tip I give other providers, so other people who take care of patients with sickle cell disease, um, really comes down to um, every patient is, is, is really walking a wonderful journey that you have to help them through. Um, and that when I say wonderful, I mean uh, it's a journey that always has ups and downs, no matter what, everybody has ups and downs. And, and your job as a healthcare provider is to help them through those periods where they're not doing well. Um, because when you see our, our patients when they're doing well, it's amazing. And, and the productivity and the ability for our patients when they're doing well is, is absolutely just like anyone else. And, and many times providers, just like some patients sometimes, providers have this misconception because they, maybe they're biased in the sense that biased that they see more often not, than not the patients who are not doing well. And just as I described before, patients when they're doing well don't necessarily come to the office. So I want the, the other sickle cell providers, and probably more importantly, other uh, ER providers, primary care providers to understand that uh, th th it's the times that they're doing well that make it, of course, every, the reason we do all of this is that we get to see um, the path of all, each of our patients. So if there's one big tip, which is, which is really um, walk the journey with our patients, help us help our patients go through what they need to, and most importantly, and I would say this is more of a um, uh, having the providers understand versus a tip, um, but someone will have your back no matter what. Um, there's always a provider that, that uh, for the most part, that will take ownership of that sickle cell patient, even if it's not their sickle cell patient. Um, and so again, just to give you an example, if there's anyone in this area that has an issue, I absolutely say email me, text me, call me, figure out a way to get a hold of me so I can give you my two cents and say, this is what I would do in that situation. May not be my patient. How do I get that patient to get the appropriate care? Um, and I think that in itself gives comfort to a lot of providers, just knowing that someone has their back. Because sometimes, again, uh, and this was actually, uh, I saw in a recent survey, when they asked the doctors, why is it that you feel uncomfortable? And one of the top reasons was they didn't feel comfortable taking care of patients with sickle cell disease. They didn't feel like they had expertise. They weren't a super specialist, as some people call it. Um, and, and we don't expect everyone to be a super specialist, but we do have super specialists out there. We have providers that have the training, and we're there. We're, and there's lots of us out there to try and get you to have your back. So that's at least five questions. Does that yeah, I think answer? So a good number of those? Yes, I think so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your sure. time. Um, that's a lot of important information. And, you know, I think some of them he was talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm going to post it and I hope you guys listen. Uh, I'll put information um, down about his credentials and Duke Hospital and the research study. Uh, I've posted several different things about the research study. I really, really suggest that you guys get involved. They're not asking you to do anything. They're just going to kind of follow your medical records to see how you grow. Um, so thank you, Dr. Shaw, for your time, and I'll check with you guys later. My interview today was with Dr. Nermis Shaw uh, that works at Duke sickle cell hospital he's a hematologist uh, he also works pediatric hematology oncology specialist he's the director of duke sickle cell transition program he does researches for sickle cell disease um, i personally like to call him a sickle cell advocate he is a true meaning of a sickle cell advocate 
um, I make sure that I participate in any study uh, that he offers as well as my brother and you know anyone else in my family we make sure we participate because he's just amazing at taking care of sickle cell patients and you know making sure that we have the proper care um, he spends a lot of time helping his patients live through their situations you know that come at him uh, he's dedicated himself to researches on learning more about sickle cell disease. Some of the researches that he focuses on is uh, novel therapeutic options for patients with sickle cell disease. He also does transition from pediatric to adult care for sickle cell disease. And he also does the use of mobile technology to advance patient care for sickle cell disease. I'm going to elaborate more about this, but I'm going to do it at a later time. I just wanted to do an introduction. I'm really excited that he took the time to do this. He's got several conferences coming up that he's speaking at, um, but this is why I said that he's an advocate. He always makes sure that he participates in anything that he feels is beneficial to his patients, and he's also very supportive in anything that you do. Um, he helps with fights and struggles he mentioned on his interview that if there are any providers out there that have questions about sickle cell patients you could actually personally reach out to him he'll take the time to you know go over and explain to you whatever questions you have you know then he also told patients that you know just keep fighting you could just tell the sincerity and uh, the dedication and the love that he has for sickle cell patients and their struggle so i hope you guys enjoy the interview um he'll be at the conference hopefully we can attend his presentation so we can bring that to you so I'll talk to you guys later